everyone. It's good to see so many faces uh, this morning. Really good to see uh, kids coming uh, this Sunday. So I'd like to welcome everyone. As, uh, Ian said, like we always uh, do every Sunday morning, we have to light this candle. We have to light the Christ candle every Sunday just to remind us of his presence with us and also to remind us that uh, the people have seen a great light and these people never walk in darkness again. So that's our hope for our future as we continue our journey in Lent, that we won't walk in darkness any time. So as we come to worship God, let us start worship with call to worship. In the center of our question stands, why do we suffer? Christ stands firmly facing all our realities, telling stories of our life and holding us in mercy as we struggle to make our response. In the center of all fruitfulness lies the creativity of God, celebrating the blossoming of goodness and nurturing the lifeless branches of our inadequacies. And now we read the psalm for today. O oh God, you are my God, and I long for you. My whole being desires you, like a dry, worn out, and waterless land. My soul is thirsty for you. Your constant love is better than life itself. And so I will praise you. My soul will feast and be satisfied, and I will sing glad songs of praise to you. Because you have always been my help, in the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. <laughs> Amen. And now we come to our prayer of adorations and thanksgiving. Let us come to God with our prayer. Eternal God, you are the Almighty from eternity to eternity, wiser than any man. Nevertheless, help us to begin to understand your ways and your thoughts. You make all things new. You maintain your creations at all times. Every Sunday is a resurrection day. We come feeling alive in your word, O oh God. And the psalmist always remind us that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. O oh God, you have promised that all things will work together for good to those that love you. And as we continue our journey in Lent, Lord, we thank you for your word that you have nourished us every day. Your encouragement for us today that we should go for the things that last. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? It's only through you, O Lord, that we are able to quench our thirsty in this world. You remind us to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him 
while he is near. So let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let us turn to you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy and forgiveness are available for anyone who come in repentance. Feed us with your life, Holy Spirit. Plant new fruitfulness among us as we wait to know you this day. Expand our life with your vision and dig deep into the earth in the power of your energy for good. Infuse us with your love and mercy, O oh God, so that we can show others the fruit of the Spirit. You brought us into this world for a reason, and that reason to praise and give honor to you from time to eternity. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to sing our first hymn for this morning. It's together in song 134. Let us stand and sing. And now we come to God with our prayer of confession. Lord God, we come to you to confess our sins. Forgive us when we are slow to change, but quick to judge. 
When we take more from life than we give back. When we give up on others too soon and offer support too late. When we deny others the opportunity to grow and uproot their dreams. Forgive us and grant us your patience, perseverance and vision and inspire us to care for all you have made. And if we have wasted the gifts which you have given us, letting them flow away into pointless pursuits or absorbing them into negative criticism of those around us, oh God, forgive us and give us another chance to choose a different life, holy God. And when we make quick judgment on the lives of others who suffer injustice or catastrophes or present you to the world as a cruel God who is involved in punishment harsher than we would ever give, forgive us and give us another chance to bear fruit and to show the world of your grace and mercy. And now we come with the words of assurance. Come, believe that God will offer us a chance which springs from kindness. The living waters of the Christ will flow around our feet if we will turn our lives around to look. We are forgiven for the past and invited into the future. Thanks be to God. And now we come to our Bible readings and I'd like to call on those readers to come with the word of God. Isaiah 55, God's offer of mercy. The Lord says, come, everyone who is thirsty, here is water. Come, you that have no money, buy grain and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, it'll cost you nothing. Why spend money on what does not satisfy? Why spend your wages and still be hungry? Listen to me and do what I say, and you will enjoy the best, of all, best food of all. Listen now, my people, and come to me. Come to me. You will have life. I will make a lasting covenant with you and give you blessings I promised to David. I made him a leader and commander of nations, and through him I showed, showed them my, my power. Now you will summon foreign nations, at one time they did not know you, but now they will come running to join you. I, the Lord your God, the Holy God of Israel, will make all this happen. I will give you honour and glory. Turn to the Lord and pray to him, now that he is near. Let the wicked leave their way of life, change their way of thinking. Let them turn to the Lord our God. He is merciful and quick to forgive. My thoughts, says the Lord, are not like yours. My ways are different from yours. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways and thoughts above yours. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 13, Old Testament examples. I want you to remember, my friends, what happened to our ancestors who followed Moses. They were all under the protection of the cloud and all passed safely through the Red Sea. In the cloud and in the sea, they were all baptised as followers of Moses. All ate the same spiritual bread and drank the same spiritual drink. 
They drank from the spiritual rock that went with them, and that rock was Christ himself. But even then God was not pleased with most of them, and so their dead bodies were scattered over the desert. Now, all of this is an example to us, to warn us not to desire evil things as they did, not to worship idols as some of them did. As the scripture says, people sat down to a feast, which turned into an orgy of drinking and sex. We must, be not, we must not be guilty of sexual immorality, as some of them were, and in one day 23,000 of them fell dead. We must not put the Lord to the test, as some of them did, and they were killed by snakes. We must not complain, as some of them did, and they were destroyed by the angel of death. All these things happened to them as examples for others, and they were written down as a warning for us. For we live at a time when the end is about to come. If you think you are standing firm, you had better be careful that you do not fall. <coughs> Excuse me. Every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise, and he will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. At the time you are put to the test, he will give you the strength to endure it and so provide you with a way out. And now from Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, repent or perish. At that time, some people were there who told Jesus about the Galileans whom Pilate had killed while they were offering sacrifices to God. Jesus answered them, because those Galileans were killed in that way, do you think it proves that they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, indeed. And I tell you that if you do not turn from your sins, you will die as they did. What about those 18 people in Siloam who were killed when the tower fell on them? Do you suppose this proves that they were worse than all the other people living in Jerusalem? No, indeed. And I tell you that if you do not turn from your sins, you will all die as they did. Then Jesus told them this parable. There was once a man who had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. He went looking for figs on it, but found none. So he said to his gardener, look, for three years I have been coming here looking for figs on this tree, and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it go on using up the soil? But the gardener answered, leave it alone, sir. Just one more year, I will dig around it and put in some fertilizer. Then if the tree bears figs next year, so much the better. If not, then you can cut it down. This is the word of the Lord. And now we're going to, we're going to sing a, a little song. Um, this is a, the first one, uh, it's saying, thank you, Lord. You know, what more we can say? But every day, every new day, we have to say, thank you, Lord. Not only for the life we have, but everything we have, we have to say thank you. And we have to sing hallelujah at all times. So we're going to sing that one first. And then the second one is all about the fig tree. In Tonga, we have a special, a special song about this fruitless fig tree. So every, nearly every uh, Christian community sing that song on the appropriate date. So today, uh, that is part of the reading for today in our gospel. It's about the fruitless uh, fig tree. And uh, the gardener asked for a little uh, opportunity so that uh, he can work maybe uh, it will bear fruit the next time. So we're going to sing or, or invite the, uh, the family to come. So if Nia and you, you would like to join us in Fine, you are welcome. But we're going to say this, uh, sing this song. It's, it's known as um, Malo Sisu. Malo in Tongan, thank you. Jesus, Sisu. So thank you, Malo Sisu. <clears throat> Malo. 
I'd like to tell a little story for the children. Uh, kids, is it possible for you to come to the front? You just come around here. Come on, kids. It's really, really, really good to see children in church. You can come and sit over there. Yeah, and thank you for the 
Talakindi. All right. Anyway, it's good to see you, Gitz, you know, even though you just come for one Sunday to see um, grandparents or families, but it's always good to see kids coming, you know. We are in a time where the um, children are not coming to church anymore, you know, but uh, whenever I see children coming, I'm really excited to see them coming to church. But the story that I'm going to tell you, it's about from the, from the gospel readings and to the uh, song that we just sung, it's about the fig tree. And you all know that story, you know? You know, Jesus was telling a story about someone, the owner of this um, fig tree, has visited three times. First year, he came for you know, to expect some uh, fruit from the fig tree, there was nothing. Second year, he came back, same thing, nothing. The third year, he came, no fruit. And he said to the gardener, well, I think you need to cut down this fig tree. You know, it's a waste of soil. You know, that's, uh, it's, it's no good. You know, it's uh, the leaves, you know, he take all the good stuff in the soil, but it's supposed to Bear fruit, but it's not. So cut it off. And you know what happened? The gardener asked for another more year. One more year. He said, um, owner, please, just give me one more year so that I can work, you know, around this fig tree, put some more fertilizer, manure, all those good stuff for the soil. And maybe next year, if it's bear fruit, Very good. And if not, then I have to cut down. Mm. I think we have opportunities in life, you know. Every time we have opportunities and uh, we have to grab hold of the opportunities, you know. Whenever you go, maybe at school or maybe at home, you know, sometimes we just uh, take for granted opportunities, you know. We we thought that, I I don't care, maybe uh, there's another one coming. But I mean, it's very important in life to grab hold of any opportunity that might come our way, you know. Even if you're small, but you have to grab hold of any opportunities, you know. Any, any field, you know, maybe in school, sports, everywhere you go, there are opportunities of life. And we have to use that opportunity because it might not come back, okay. So this is the, the lesson about this because today we're, we're going to talk about this but hopefully as you grow up as opportunities come into your life grab hold of that opportunity because you never know that might be the last one you know sometimes yes it's it's always true you know when we let go of an opportunity it might not come back but always hold of an opportunity in life, especially the opportunity, you know, to live life to the fullest and praise God, give thanks to God, for he is the good God. He's awesome. You know, he's the great God that we worship. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this morning and we thank you that we are seeing these kids coming to church. Lord, We thank you, Lord, because you let them come to church. And as they continue to grow in their life, Lord, let them grow in their faith. Let them continue to worship you and continue to ask for opportunities that might give them enjoyment in life, in this life and the life to come. Bless them and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may go back to your seat. And this morning, I am going to choose the gospel reading that we have heard this morning. And uh, if there's a verse that I'd like to emphasize for us this morning, it comes from Luke 13, verse 8 
And it says, Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. And a the theme for this morning, the last opportunity. The last opportunity. When we plant an orange tree or an apple tree or a lime or a mango tree at our homes, we do so with expectation that one day we will have some fruit from our trees. When we arrived at the Mains of Bach Uniting Church in 2012, there were hardly anything on that man's. It's only one mango and a few palm trees. There was nothing at that place. And when we left that man's to come to Nembo, we already planted a beautiful garden there, a lime tree, an avocado um, tree, an Indian apple, an orange, few banana trees, some yams, taros. We have not eaten some of the fruits that we have planted in that place. But we hope that the new minister will go into that man's will reap the benefits that we left there. So the point that I want to make is when we plant an orange tree, we expect the tree to bear fruit. When we plant a red rose, beautiful rose, we expect that rose to make a beautiful, beautiful flower one day. And today is about a fig tree that has been, that has not, has not bear any fruit at all. And the owner is about to cut it down. But the good gardener is asking for another opportunity to see whether he can add something into this tree to make that fruitless tree to bear some fruit. But before we go any further, we will see how our gospel reading unfolds before us. In the first part of the gospel reading for today, there were two incidents happened. Firstly, Pilate had killed some people, mixed some blood terrible, mixed some blood with their sacrifices. And some people questioned Jesus about this incident. For those people who suffer because of this incident. So these people came to Jesus and asked, were they worse than others? And Jesus said, I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. And secondly, there were 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. And the same question they asked Jesus, do you think that they were guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? And Jesus said, I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. So Jesus really emphasized the importance of repentance. It's not the big sin and the small sin that counts. It's our response to God that really matters. We all need to repent because there's no perfect man on earth. We are all sinners in the face of God that we all need forgiveness. And we all need to repent for our sins. So Jesus refuses to get caught, up, get caught up in the abstract debate on the problem of either moral or natural evil. Jesus didn't want to, to be part of that. 
because the time is short and the urgency of repentance for everyone is so great. So don't waste time worrying over others whether they are worse than others. Do you know we sometimes contrast people? We, we tend to do that. We contrast people. These people are no good because they are so and so. We are better than them because we are so and so. These people are so bad, so we make sure that we don't approach them, make sure that we don't mix with them. That's what we often do. But Jesus is saying, just repent. When I think of the Nike local, I think that is the way to go. It's always remind me when I see the Nike shoes, just do it. It's always a reminder when we want to do something, do it. In the Corinthians reading, it says in verse 12, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. What Paul is emphasizing here, sometimes we Christians posting in our strength and in our spirituality, etc. And all of a sudden, we fall. Paul is saying to us, all the faithful Christians, our God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And you know, the story of Joseph in Egypt is one of a good example of that. He managed to overcome all the temptations because the Holy Spirit provided a way out. We can do it with the power of the Holy Spirit. The second part of the gospel reading is about the fig tree that was owned by a man. He went the first year, there was no fruit. Went the second year, there was no fruit. And he went the third year, there was still no fruit. And he said to the cardinal, cardinal, cut it down. It's a waste of soil. And the verse that we emphasized this morning, this morning, Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then I'll have to cut it down. Our theme for today says the last opportunity. We have to be aware that opportunities never last. There will be a final time for us in our journey of life. Someone says that three things won't come back. A spat arrow, an arrow that has been released, it won't come back. The spoken word, once we say something, we can't grab it back. And the third one is the lost opportunity. Some say that opportunity never comes twice. I do believe the first two but for me, there may be another opportunity. Life is full of opportunities, but we have to grab hold of it, and it comes without delaying. In verse 6 to 9, Jesus tells the parable of the parent fig tree. The owner did not cut any fruits for three years, and he just accepted the plea from the gardener. He accepted what he said, you know, ask for another chance. So the implication is that the time is very short. God is giving us just a little more time to repent. So further delay is very unwise. Don't wait. This is the time. The first part of Luke today about these two, incident, two incidents seems to pull in different directions. It is about the familiar ring of urgency 
that is associated with Jesus' ministry. All who meet Jesus are aware that they have come to a crisis point, a point at which they have to take and make decisions. And it sounds as though the people who told Jesus about the death of those people at the hands of Pilate were hoping, they were hoping that Jesus would provoke into some kind of violent reactions. And if so, they were disappointed. Instead, Jesus faces them with the knowledge of their own mortality. Don't put off life. Changing decisions and Jesus urges them because you may never have the chance again. There was a story of two men who were walking along a road on the far north coast of Scotland. I don't know about Scotland. Never been there, but hopefully some people will know uh, these places. And on one side was the sea, and on the other side were a cliff. So the road was safe only at low tide. And these two men enjoyed the views of the cliff and the incoming waves. They were too busy talking and with other things that they were unmindful of the coming tide. An observer upon the lofty cliff cried out, the tide is rising behind you and ahead of you. The waters have already covered the road. If you go beyond the rock, you will be swept out into the sea. So the travelers did not care about the warnings from the observer. They thought that they could reach a point where the road turned away from the seashore. So they proceeded. They continued on their journey. And they saw that the sea was rapidly covering the road. They hastened their steps, but presently they saw that the sea had already cut off their escape. There was no way out. So they cried out for help, but their cries were in vain. The angry sea had carried them into the deep ocean, and they both drowned and died. This story reminds us of the opportunities that we sometimes ignored because we thought that there might be another chance coming up. But in actual, this might be the last opportunity of life. In the Old Testament reading, Isaiah knew that our time and opportunity with the Lord is limited. Life is too short anyway. And he said in Isaiah 55, Seek the Lord while he may be found, and call on him while he is near. The last opportunity means we have to live life as this is the last. When you live life, to the fullest, you will witness the psalm of the day. I long for you, Lord. Nothing but meeting with the Lord can really satisfy us. You know, physical experiences can sometimes reflect how we feel spiritually. There's no doubt that when David wrote this psalm, he was reflecting back on a time when he was physically thirsty. The title tells us that he had experienced a period of wandering in the desert of Judah, the heading of the psalm. And in this psalm, David explores what it means to be spiritually thirsty. He obviously has been through times when he was so desperate for God that it really hurt. People traveling 
in a hot, humid land need water to quench their thirsty. And only a cool, refreshing dream will meet their real need. And likewise, when we become thirsty for God's presence in our lives, only his refreshing touch will do. A person deprived of water in a hot climate will soon dehydrate and die. In the spiritual realm, it is equally dangerous to become de dehydrated. Recognizing this, David in this psalm is passionate about meeting the Lord. Nothing short of a direct encounter with him will do. Only God can really quench his thirst. In verse 1, for David, this is, this is the last opportunity that he longs for. To meet with the only one who can truly satisfy his soul. There are Christian people who still believe that suffering had something to do with sin. Earthly suffering is not the result of sin. But judgment is real. Unless we ask for forgiveness, we do will perish. The parable of the fig tree illustrates that God's mercy is there for us, giving us yet another chance, another time, another opportunity to turn our lives around. And when we turn to God in repentance, the evidence of that repentance is the bearing of the fruit. If I would like to leave a message for us today, it's about the gardener who cares for a continually fruitless tree. The parable ends marked by his patience and attention. Has he advocated for the tree before? Will he make the same case to the owner next year? How far does God's grace extend? With hope forever. But Jesus' warning remains. Repent before it's too late. We are not invited to fine-tune our response, but to act in the presence, grace of God. We don't know when we are called home, but during our time on earth, let us make it a joyful adventure because we are here for a reason, and that reason to glorify our Lord in all our days. Do not delay things. And a final story, which thief? I am all right, said self-righteous, procrastinating young man to a man who sought to bring him to Christ. Don't worry about me. It's one world at the time for me. I'll go on enjoying life while it lasts. And there's time enough near life's end, then I will, the dying thief will turn to God. And the personal worker replied, when the end comes, I wonder which dying thief you will be like. There were two of them, as you recall. This is our call. This is the last opportunity we have to grab hold of the opportunity in life because there might not be any other opportunity. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your patience with us. Even though we are more like the fig tree, you give us time and opportunity to turn around from this world and face you. You are the light of this world. And those who have seen the light never walk in darkness again. Let us be fruitful like the fruit of the Spirit and to use our time on earth wisely so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Amen. And now we're going to 
<clears throat> sing hymn 569. This is a commitment hymn for us. 569, let us sing. Loving God, who gives us more than we will ever know, we offer you this our gift. This is a small token to show our appreciation of your great love and your mercy. Be our guide as we use them in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. the prayer of intercession. Thank you. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we pray to you for so many things, but sometimes we forget you're there and we forget to praise and pray, pray to you. Please remind us to pray. Please help the world sort itself out. How can we continue with so much turmoil? Love, peace and understanding are just not around in some places and countries at the moment. Please remind us to pray. In the last few weeks, people here in our country have struggled with extreme weather conditions never seen before on this scale. The hearts of many strangers have been open to help with moving furniture, cleaning out mud and dirt. Terrible things, but they've shown their love. Love has been seen. We give you thanks for that. You have shown us how we can care for one another an answer I'm sure we can find in all the prayers lifted up to you. Across the world has seen a war begin, very one-sided it seems. Many of the countries, including Australia, have found ways to show their feelings by sanctions put on this larger country. We pay, pray for the Ukrainians being invaded and many people prepared to lose their lives to save their way of life and freedom. We must remember to pray. We ask for these people who have faith in you, Lord, to know you care for them and that they continue to stay close to you no matter what happens 
so that they know that you love them. With COVID being lived with around many countries now, they're finding their way back to so much more normal way of life. We need to pray for all the medical staff, doctors, nurses, ambulance carers, all those people that have been involved in saving and trying to save life. Help them to return to a much less pressured life. We need to pray for them, Father. Our prayers go out to the families who are dealing with death through the COVID of their loved ones, young and old. With this, our church family, we thank you as we pray for each other and everyone who still calls this place their place of worship. Many who have been unable to come for so long now due to COVID, due to their health conditions. They're very sick and they're weary, Lord. We ask for Mali and Siali to settle in and to be, we're very excited about the time that we have ahead. I thank you, Lord, from the deep the part of my heart. We will see love, peace and understanding grow in each of us if we remember to pray, pray and pray. And we will pray now, we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom of the power and the glory of yours. Amen. And now we going to sing our last hymn for this morning. It's uh, Rock of Ages. Let us sing. <clears throat> benediction and may the princes of our life as the church
We bowed low to the people around us with fruit for all which comes from our life in Jesus Christ. May the Holy God be with us each day and enrich all that we are in faith. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.